It's just this kind of tight, tight feeling. Just, um, just it's not resolvable. Yeah, quite, for, for, through any reasoning, it's not okay. However much you rationalize this, just, uh, it's too much. essential of being a human being is probably purpose or finding purpose. Experiencing pain and sadness like in any capacity, you know, falling in love, getting your heart broken, how we cope with those things is what makes us all different, but the initial feeling behind it is pretty much all the same. today is Taco Bell with a large drink and I would like the number nine and that's like I think the crunchy taco wrap supreme or something and then it comes with an extra taco on the side you can get like soft or hard taco when I was born I came into this world the wrong body but we're working on that <laughs> The past eight months I've gone through dealing with my hormones and dealing with all the stuff that kind of comes with being a woman. When I close my eyes, I see possibility and room for growth. I see someone that's genuinely trying to live a honest life. I see struggle. I see hope. But I was don't know how to get there yet. And I just worry, like, will people actually see me as a human being and be able to kind of connect with me? And that makes it even harder to be accepted by society when you look a certain way. You play this game, you know, of looking in one way but living life another way. It's sad. I feel like people are afraid of themselves. People are afraid of their own voices. They don't want to cope with anything that has to do with the real them. Actually, we we all we all the same. We all we all like like like. I think that's something we have in common: the struggle. Because you can't act hurt, you know, in a land of wolf. This is a jungle of cement. This could have been a good planet. Eve didn't invite that up. Once he eat by the apple, that was just what, what poison on, on the fucking, on the planet. Call it sin, and the devil love it. The city is a nest of scorpions, thriving, eating each other. I feel like it wants to eat me. I feel like it wants me to just jump in, let myself be consumed. Held belief out there that you can like control things. Fun fact, you can. I was a baby, a little over a year old. My mom and her sister and friends they were playing with the Ouija board, having some wine, hanging out, and all they wanted to talk about was me. And that ghost story was pretty fundamental to like my identity. Just growing up feeling uh, spectral in a lot of ways. All I know is life and death are very thin. None of us are separate. I think that I'm a part of you, and I think that our 
be a part of everything when I die. We're spiritual beings living a human existence. You can be lonely in a crowd of people. I feel separate. I'll be very honest with you. It feels like, uh, like an outdated toy. At one point it was something that everyone enjoyed, had fun with, but it's forgotten about now. I've always felt separate. Always. I mean, when I was younger, I had bad issues. Like, I was so fucking weird, and I was so, like... Because my father died when I was really young. He died when I was 11, and all this catastrophic, really sad times, you know, happening in that, in that moment in my life. And I didn't know that I had anything to help me kind of, like, through that. I want to be able to give my daughter, like, the freedom of choice. What it means to value honesty, value loyalty, value kindness, love, what life is really about, you know, the energy of the universe. I've had problems with, like, anxiety and stuff, like, no more than anyone else. I mean, maybe more than other people, but... And I was living with this woman who basically opened my eyes to the fact that maybe I have a bit of an issue with substances. It's like being stuck in a wood and, you know, you'd have to suffer, suffer the night and it would get cold. But ultimately in the day you couldn't even see where you're going. Sadness looks like someone you want to help but you know that you never will be able to because they don't want to help themselves fundamentally. Addiction is very powerful and it will tear you apart if you don't get help for it. It just scares me when a person's in denial. That's when it scares me because I'm like, I want to help you, but what can, you understand if you're not believing in yourself and you're not believing there's a problem, what can I do for you? And it's hard to get somebody out of that place. It's hard to get somebody out of that dark zone. It's it's a, a, a thing that never ends. It's, it's something in your life that you just can't stop. You can't, no matter how hard you try, you need help. You need some kind of help somehow. And that whole vicious cycle all over again, doing the same thing every day, every day, every day, looking for different results. Watching my brothers and my father doing addiction, I had to be strong. But I don't ever look down at them because I know it's a disease and I know it's something that they can't control. I know a lot of people out there, they have, they're like, to me, they're cold hearted. Like when I see people down, you know, looking down at addicts and stuff, like you don't know what they're going through, you know what kind of life they live. You know, everybody has their story. There was a time that I went to my brother, like somebody called me and he was dead. Like he was dead, he, he was overdosed. He, when I went to him, he was purple. And I guess, I always say it was my love or something that bring him back because when I got there and I was like screaming his name and like punching him and stopping him, it's like when he, you know, when I was like, please, please, is when he came back to life. it clearly in the Bible you know um, a lot of people think I, it's a feeling and it's not it's just an action you just gotta do it a girl named Oasis that's the deepest love I ever felt like golden liquid pouring from a silver sky <laughs> it's the best way to describe it like talking about her, this whole center is girl mushy. Like right here, like just talking about her, like my face hurts. Like you know, she's she's the best and the worst. <laughs> but a lot of people that I see experiencing love have a lot of pain, and I feel like I have enough pain. So it feels like I'm almost better off without it. Heartbreak told me what love was. I mean, love, love is a really beautiful thing when it's going on, man. But once that love is done, it's like, things happen, you know? So yeah, I've been heartbroken before. Like, everything that dies gives birth to something else. Just because I feel a certain way right now, it's not going to last. A broken heart, a broken heart, I feel 
like mm, a broken heart initially it feels like it feels like like what I would imagine like the oxygen being turned off on you. I see really weird. I see me as a kid. She's lost. But it's not an accurate depiction of exactly how I look. But it's like I'm standing like on this very blank stage, just like looking around. Living a life. And I can see myself hearing my voice right now. I'm looking really lost. I think for me, one of the most painful things that I have to deal with is kind of coming to terms with the idea that I've kind of embarked on this transition and I might not fully be able to be to be the way that like I kind of like envision myself being um, I just think it's like I don't know I think I kind of would have thought about it a little bit more before. And I think Yeah, I don't know. I just forgot what the question was, what the fucking question was. that I'm never going to be able to kind of get to the end, you know, like, of how I see myself and, like, how I want to be. I just, I don't think I'll ever get there. And that's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Oh. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forget those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Yeah. I was so lucky that anyone cared. And actually the fact that someone cared was so much more effective than the actual treatment itself. When you know, I think you're that imbalanced chemically and you've isolated yourself to that point, I think you can tell yourself that you're not seeing people, you're not, you haven't got a connection with people because they are shit. You know, you defend yourself. You don't want to admit that you're the reason for your loneliness. So when people put their, put their hand out to help, and sincerely help with no agenda of their own, other than like you being well. 
I think that that opened up a whole new thought for me that I had been lacking for a long time. I think uh, having a connection with other humans is like a, kind of one of the things that makes life worth living. you wake up, it's a clean page of a book. You get to write your story every day. And when, you, when you're not in this world no more, you want to leave a story where people are going to remember you by. A good one. Exciting. This right here is life, right here. Not what happened yesterday and not what's going to happen tomorrow, but right now is life. Without no struggle, there's no progress. Like, you know, you gotta go through some shit in order to learn some shit. You know something's wrong, and you, 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 that's enough to make a change. The hope is this, hearing other people's experience. You know, you have a moment to say, you know what, I make a difference. To love, to be sympathetic towards one another, compassion, you know, that, that's what we're here for. That's, that's it. This is who I've been waiting for. And the feeling that she gives me is indescribable to anything that I've ever felt before. She's so small, but her love is so big, it's massive. <laughs> it fills me up with so much joy, hope, love, possibility, motivation, inspiration, even fear. I'm so afraid all the time. <laughs>